The music of role-playing games, or RPGs, has been a frequent site of exploration for scholars of video game music in recent years, due in part to their greater narrative sophistication relative to many other game genres. Authors have addressed the ways that polyphonic development, thematic motif recall, and musical topic may inform interpretation of musical meaning in RPGs. Yet despite the considerable amount of study on musical meaning in role-playing games, relatively little attention has been paid to the role of musical form in creating or reinforcing these interpretations. Such studies have more often dealt with compositions from the Western classical tradition, as in the work of James Hepikowski and Warren Darcy, Stephen Van de Mortela, Matthew Riley, and others. Andrew Shortman's dissertation on the music of the Nintendo Entertainment System is one of the few scholarly works to consider the relationship of form and musical meaning in a video game, expanding theories by Karen Collins and William Kaplan and applying them to a hermeneutic reading of Takashi Tateishi's soundtrack to Mega Man 2. The present study takes observations on formal function and small-scale phrase structures and applies them to music from Japanese role-playing games, or JRPGs, released during the late 1980s and 1990s. Building on previous scholarship in ludomusicology and Kaplanian form-functional theory, I argue that musical form plays a significant role in differentiating between particular settings within a role-playing world, towns, dungeons, and so forth, each of which tends to favor different formal strategies. I will begin by briefly summarizing the core gameplay loop of the JRPG and the settings typically traversed within it. Then, I will discuss the formal functions associated with two common formal types, the sentence and the period, and demonstrate how their usage tends to correlate with particular gameplay contexts, underscoring the repeating arc of tension and resolution that accompanies the player's journey. To illustrate the core gameplay loop of a typical Japanese RPG, let's take a look at the starting portion of the world map from the original Final Fantasy. The leader of the player's party is shown here standing in front of Cornelia Castle and the surrounding castle town. After stocking up on supplies in the town and receiving information on their starting quest, the party heads north, traversing the field or overworld to reach the Chaos Shrine, the first dungeon of the game and the site of their first quest objective, finding several random enemy counters along the way. After braving the dangers of the shrine to defeat the evil Garland and rescue Princess Sarah, the party traverses the field map once more and returns to the safety of the town, resting and stocking up on resources in order to prepare for their next expedition. There may be slight variations on this loop at certain points in the game. For instance, the party may travel between two towns instead of a town and a dungeon, and some dungeons, such as underground tunnels or mountain passes, may act as a midpoint between two towns. Nevertheless, the general idea remains the same. The party travels between zones of rest and zones of danger, while field travel represents an intermediate state of tension and carries a sense of forward momentum from one destination to the next. The musical cues associated with towns, fields, and dungeons are what William Gibbons calls location-based cues. These may be contrasted with game state cues such as battle music, which are tied to particular situations, such as being in a battle, rather than particular locations. The battle music for the original Final Fantasy, for instance, is the same for every battle in the game, regardless of where it takes place. Gibbons notes that these cues orally indicate the nature and relative safety of each setting. In a moment, I will discuss more systematically how these characteristics are reflected musically, both through musical form and through more obvious surface features. For the time being, though, we will turn to William Kaplan's theory of formal functions, focusing on the aspects of the theory that will be most relevant to our discussion. Kaplan describes this theory of formal functions as a means of demonstrating how musical spans express their temporality. In other words, how they embody a sense of beginning, middle, or ending at different levels of hierarchical structure. Given the relative brevity of early video game cues, I will be focusing on lower levels of structure, and in particular, on two common formal types, the sentence and the period. Each of these formal types is associated with particular formal functions, which, in Kaplan's words, arise from criteria involving multiple parameters, most importantly harmony, tonality, grouping, and cadence. The classical sentence consists of three functions, presentation, continuation, and cadential. Many scholars, including Kaplan himself, demonstrate a sentence's properties using the opening of Beethoven's Piano Sonata No. 1 in F minor. But since this is a paper on video game music, I'll be using a theme by Koji Kondo from the North American release of Super Mario Bros. 2. The music for World 1-1 begins with the presentation of a two-measure basic idea, followed by an altered repetition. The continuation section of the sentence, which expresses continuation and cadential functions, begins in measure 5, demonstrating three of the properties Kaplan associates with continuation function fragmentation into smaller units, an increase in surface rhythmic activity, and an acceleration of harmonic rhythm. Measures 7 and 8 conclude the sentence with a cadential function as a 2-5-1 progression leads to a perfect authentic cadence.
Conveniently enough, the second section of this track contains a period, so let's keep going. According to Kaplan's definition, the period consists of only two functions, antecedent and consequent, and lacks a medial function. The antecedent begins with a basic idea followed by a contrasting idea and a weak cadence, either half or imperfect authentic. The consequent phrase repeats and alters the antecedent in order to achieve stronger cadential closure, generally a perfect authentic cadence. Despite the obvious difference in style from high classical music, this example precisely follows classical practice from a form-functional standpoint. Sentences and periods behave differently from each other from an energetic standpoint. Josef Rufer sums up this difference by stating that the sentence is, quote, a dynamic form which is really in motion in contrast to the static resting period form, end quote. The design of a typical period, two similar phrases often consisting of two balanced halves, contributes to this sense of rest, as does the strong cadence at the end of the consequent phrase. The sense of motion a roofer associates with the sentence, or as Stephen Van de Mortela calls it, the sentence's forward-oriented dynamic character, is largely due to the nature of continuation function. Mark Richards describes acceleration as the fundamental property of a continuation, noting the three common features I mentioned earlier, fragmentation into smaller units, an increase in surface rhythmic activity, and an acceleration of harmonic rhythm. Additionally, sentences are more flexible than periods in terms of cadential closure. A sentence may end with a weak or a strong cadence, and some scholars, such as Van de Mortel and Richards, do not require a cadence at all. Closing function may be expressed by other means, or in some cases may be absent entirely. The energetic and cadential properties associated with these formal types have an important role in defining the three types of location-based cues outlined earlier, town, field, and dungeon. We will now turn to a closer examination of these cues in order to discuss the ways in which these cue types and the formal functions associated with them parallel the states of momentum and rest of a JRPG protagonist's journey. Many town themes from JRPGs share a number of common characteristics, major mode tonality, a slow or moderate tempo, and a texture consisting of a melodic line over an arpeggiated accompaniment. The melodic line is often assigned to a woodwind instrument, usually a flute or an oboe, and the arpeggiated accompaniment is assigned to a plucked string instrument, often a guitar, but sometimes a harp or pizzicato string section. Sometimes an additional layer of orchestral strings will supplement the accompaniment, often with sustained chords. Additionally, it is common for town themes to begin with a period, often as the first part of larger binary form. Nobuo Uematsu's town music from Final Fantasy II is a typical example. The version played here is from the PlayStation remake. Even when sententially shaped structures are present in town themes, the accelerational aspects of the continuation are either downplayed or absent entirely. In Naoki Kodaka's soundtrack to Albert Odyssey 2, the music for the town of Octania contains a period containing two sentences instead of a basic idea and contrasting idea, but neither phrase demonstrates fragmentation or an acceleration of harmonic rhythm, and the rhythmic activity actually decreases at the start of the continuation. You may have noticed that the harmonies at the end of each phrase don't quite correspond to conventional cadential formulas. I read these spots as authentic cadences with an additional harmony interpolated between the dominant and tonic chords, essentially a harmonization of what would have otherwise been embellishing tones on the downbeats of measures 4 and 8. Departures from classical conventions like this are not uncommon. For instance, a few of Uematsu's town themes actually replace the final authentic cadence at the end of the consequent phrase with a plagal cadence. Periods in town music still end with tonic final closure, though, fulfilling the role of the consequent to end with a stronger sense of closure than the antecedent. Shown here is a list of town themes that contain periods. 
The combination of balanced symmetrical phrase structure and tonic final closure, which tend to be less common in field and dungeon music, contribute to the sense of rest that towns are supposed to create for the player, a moment of repose between adventuring expeditions. Field themes are somewhat difficult to generalize. Aside from having a faster tempo or higher rhythmic density than town themes, they occur in major and minor keys with roughly equal frequency and vary in texture, instrumentation, and form. However, there are some common characteristics that appear in a number of field themes by several different composers. One common strategy is to employ a combination of musical features characteristic of a military topos, underscoring the adventuring party's march into battle, a tempo of around 116 to 120 beats per minute, quadruple meter, and the inclusion of a snare drum. Shown here is a list of themes containing these features. Field cues, particularly of this variety, are somewhat more likely to utilize sentence or sentence-like structures than other cue types, supporting the forward orient of the party's journey. The second world map theme from Capcom's Breath of Fire consists of two sentences, each ending in a half cadence. Here's the second half of the theme. Koichi Sugiyama's world map theme for Dragon Quest III employs a structure that, in Kaplanian terms, is a hybrid between a sentence and a period, consisting of an antecedent phrase, a basic idea plus a contrasting idea, and a continuation. This version of the theme is from the Super Famicom remake of Dragon Quest III. The instrumentation here closely mirrors Sugiyama's own symphonic arrangement written around the time of the original game's release. Sentential structures are even more common in the airship themes written by Nobuo Uematsu for the Final Fantasy series. The acquisition of an airship in a Final Fantasy title marks a moment of empowerment for the player, an opening up of the world to new places that were previously inaccessible, allowing for faster travel without random enemy encounters. Out of the dozen or so airship themes Uematsu wrote for the series, most of them contain sentences or sentence-like structures. A few of them, like the airship theme for the original Final Fantasy, consist entirely of a single sentence. Van de Mortalis' comment about the forward-orient and dynamic character of the sentence seems especially appropriate here, especially given the successive degrees of fragmentation over the course of the continuation. A fitting choice for such a speedy conveyance. Dungeons, like towns, represent points of arrival for adventurers on their journey, although they are, of course, places of great danger rather than places of refuge. The overall affect created by many dungeon themes is one of stasis rather than rest. The party is likely to spend a while exploring, hunting down their next quest objective, although there is a sense of uncertainty about what perils may lie around the next corner. The aesthetic of dungeons is created musically through the use of static or tonally ambiguous harmony and a higher degree of repetition than other location-based cues. Some of the first dungeon themes to employ this aesthetic come from an obscure title called King's Night Special, one of Nobuo Uematsu's earliest soundtracks. Released the same year as the original Final Fantasy, King's Night Special was an enhanced conversion of the fantasy-themed shooter King's Night from Famicom to Japanese home computers. Exclusive to this version was a series of 12 dungeons with gameplay mechanics similar to early action RPGs like Hydlide, each with a newly composed theme. The degree of repetition in this music is striking. Nine of the twelve themes feature exact repetition of at least one large section of the form, with some themes repeating every section. 
Chord progressions often consist of repeated oscillations between two harmonies, what Philip Tagg refers to as shuttles, or short loops in an A-B-A-C pattern, which almost never articulate cadential arrival. The music for the Valley of Zack is a typical example. The pairing of repeated ideas suggests presentation function, but without continuation or cadential function, the music lacks a sense of teleological drive. Like a path through a twisting labyrinth, the sense of beginning and end is blurred as the music winds back on itself. Out of the three examples that do not repeat a large formal section, two of them are worth mentioning here. Both of them are derived from pre-existing sources. The first, from the music for Val Labyrinth, you'll probably be able to recognize. This also happens to be the only use of a period I have ever encountered in a JRPG dungeon theme. Here's the other example, from Beth Tower. Those of you who are familiar with the soundtrack to the Famicom version of King's Night may recognize this as an alteration of the overworld music. I'll play a short excerpt here. The fact that the Beth Tower theme, which sounds so different from the other dungeon themes, is a reworking of overworld music further underscores the contrast between dungeon and overworld aesthetics. Numerous other dungeon themes employ these same formal and harmonic features. Yasunori Shiono's dungeon music for Lufia 2, Rise of the Sinistrals, is a typical example. Not all dungeon themes are quite as repetitive as the examples I've shown, although one can find short repeated segments, ostinato figures, and harmonic shuttling in plenty of other tracks. The list shown here is by no means exhaustive. I have shown some of the ways that formal function works with other musical parameters to delineate between gameplay contexts. The balanced structure of the period creating rest in town themes. The energetic drive of the sentence creating forward momentum during field travel, especially in airship themes and repetitive, harmonically ambiguous structures creating stasis and uncertainty in dungeon themes. However, there are still other issues to consider in future research. Some location-based cues do not fit these models. For instance, Koichi Sugiyama's town themes for the Dragon Quest series are generally much more upbeat and less likely to exhibit periodic structures than other town themes. A closer examination of these exceptions may reveal other sets of common trends, giving rise to other subtypes of each kind of cue. Also, the titles examined here have all been sword and sorcery fantasy, and series with a stronger sci-fi bent, such as Fantasy Star, might not play by the same rules. Finally, I have not given any attention to battle themes here. A cursory examination suggests that they often possess some of the same characteristics as dungeon themes, but at a faster tempo and a higher likelihood of cadential articulation, although further examination would be necessary to refine or overturn that viewpoint. The vibrant worlds created by the Japanese role-playing game will continue to draw inquiry into the music that underscores them, and on that front, our quest has only just begun. Thank you.